Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Nigel here with you with part 7 of this uh, Dasworks SM Hunter Seaboot U9 or uh, 9. <laughs> um, is it Einsweider Act, Act Sing? Einsweider I fear Funktzak 7 Act 9. Yes, 9. So um, there we go. <laughs> um, German for you there. So uh, looking at this bow still, moving it forward. Um, I've got the deck in, yes, and I have got a piece of plastic strip in there, more of that later. Um, I'm feeling it, if you look on the top, it's absolutely fine. But if we get go down here, I can feel it kind of coming along. It's almost as though it comes along and then it goes out, ready for that big square lump that was there. And then I've put an angle on the front. So basically it's sort of exaggerated. It feels like what I've got now, what we had before was this kind of thing. Yeah. And it feels like what I've got now, I've, I've kind of come along and sanded this front on it like this. So it feels like exaggerated, it's kind of like this now on the front. So I need to sort of blend that out. So that's going to mean removing those rivets, but as I showed you in part six, I've got all those rivets. There, it's only a straight line. Down here actually feels all right. It's only these two areas here that feel funny. So I'm actually going to come in with my um, little Infini sander. I'm going to start by putting a black line down the edge. So I know when to stop. Okay, and I'm also actually thinking out loud, I'm going to put some tape over the... I'm going to put some tape over that second row of rivets because I don't want to start destroying everything. Here we go here. So I'm going to put some tape over them and that'll just, it won't protect, if you keep rubbing at it, putting tape over them won't actually protect them if you keep rubbing at it. But if the sanding stick happens to just knock into them, then if the sanding stick just happens to knock into them, then you'll, um, then it'll, it'll protect them. So. I'm just going to come along here and as you can see it's sanding off a p an area here it's not actually going into you know, it's starting to go into the bit I've coloured in now and straight away even after that little bit that just feels so much better there we go see now I've touched that paper and you can see the rivets are starting to show through That's it, job done. So yeah, losing that second line of rivets is going to have to be done, I'm afraid. So that shows that even if you do as the um, RC subs suggest by sanding out the inside, it's really not going to work for you. You're going to get the thinner bag, but you're going to have that funny shape around the outside. So we'll get in there, make sure we get in this corner here. I think when we do the other side, I'll zoom you in so you can see what I'm doing. We have actually got a narrower one here for that little area down there. I haven't put new abrasive on it, so we'll see how it does. Oh, that's fine. It's sanding. There we go. That's better. That feels so much better. Right. So what I think I'll do is zoom you in, like so. Okay, and I'm going to make sure that you can see what I'm doing. So I need to make sure I stay in the right spot. So I need to hold my hand there. In fact, I'll put something there so you know that I've got to stay there. Right, so I've got my pen line here. I've got my tape here protecting the rivets. So I'm just going to sort of, I'm not going to go like this. I'm not going to sound at this angle. Or at this angle or at this angle, I'm just going to sort of go straight into it. And you can see that what that's doing, it's almost as though there's a step where that line of rivets is. And I'm just going to keep sanding until I start to touch the ink I've just put on. And that's going to blend this all in. There we go.
I've just thought today is Tuesday. My shorn horse doesn't come yet. And another piece of premium hobbies news. I was talking to Ed yesterday via email. I didn't realise he is able to get hold of the Flyhawk range of ships. So. And remember, you've got your code NMB10. So if you want any um, Flyhawk ship models, which I know Flyhawk are really, really good, then get in touch. Get in touch with Ed at Premium Hobbies. He'll, uh, he'll sort you out. He'll probably get you a ship model as well. Not a ship model, a ship model. There we go, it's blending that out beautifully. Now I can see from this, you can see that I haven't touched, I haven't touched the tape and we've still got shiny plastic. So obviously there was a lump there because I still haven't touched the, the bit I've scraped either. So obviously it was sort of coming along, exaggerated and, and there was a lump there. And that is now gone. The only thing is now we need to redo those rivets. So you've heard me say in the past as well, in other videos I've said Archer, Archer is a com another company that makes rivets. The HGW rivets you can get readily available in this country, in the UK, but they're not very pronounced. I've used them before and they, they're very difficult to see under a coat of paint. At least the ones I've got are. They're called fine lines or something. And uh, yeah, they weren't very visible. So bear that in mind. I think they're more sort of for, for representing rivets on aircraft, which, you know, flush rivets on aircraft are hardly visible. Um, see, like on a P-47 wing or something, you've got areas on Spitfires where the rivets would be massive. But, um, like Lancasters and stuff. But uh, a lot of the later war stuff was kind of flush riveted, but you could still see there was something there. And I think that's what the HGW rivets are there for. There we go. Now that feels fantastic. That's great. I'm just going to take some more out of this side. Just to blend this all in. When you see me go off camera, I'm wiping the, the stick on my jeans to clean the debris out. Somebody suggested in one of these videos that you use a rubber and eraser for getting the dust out. I've tried it and it doesn't seem to work for me. There we go. That's much better. Okay, so if you can see that, if I bring you in close. You can see now we've got it all tapered out nicely. I've also removed some material from this raised area here because that was sticking up. So, um, yeah, happy with that. I'm going to do a little bit more sanding on there and then we'll call that a done thing. There we go. So I'll see you back in a second. Okay, so are you ready for it? You want to see what's happened? Here you go. There's the bow. And you can see where it's sanded because it's dull. You can see I've removed the rivets. You see I've removed the rivets from under here. I've done this front plate, this front sort of plate here now. I've removed all the rivets from that. I've also improved the shape of the bow going along here, the underside. And I've got that plate still there with this edge around it so that'll pick up a wash we've got to put some rivets on there and uh, yeah that's that takes quite a lot of slimming out there because it sort of comes down comes down here it's sort of from this side from this view here I've got it between my legs now we it's coming down like this and it's tapering down and then it sort of squares up to give that flat bottom so there's quite a lot to remove from there probably like half a mill aside if that, maybe even a bit more so um yeah so that's that's the bow and I'm a lot happier with that now 
So thank you to those that sort of pushed me into it. Um, I'm glad I've done it and it is a fairly easy conversion if you've got the rivets to go in there. So next thing on there is to spray that with Mr. Surfacer, with Thin Mr. Surfacer 1500 and have a look at it, see what it looks like, clean it up. And then I need to finally give it a, a coat of Mr. Surfacer and then we'll put the rivets on and I will show you that as sort of a, a decalling operation. They go down, they do, they do go down lovely. I've only used them a couple of times, but they do go down nice. Um, right, so <clears throat> I can't obviously do this Mr. Surfacer now because as I mentioned in my last video about health and safety, um, you must remember that the chemicals we use, particularly this one, Mr. Mr. Color Level in Thinner 400, it's really not very good for you at all. So you really need a mask, extraction, whatever, make sure there's no pets in the room. And the other thing to remember is, um, I know from spraying cars, one of the things people do wrong, um, big time, when they're spraying sort of two-pack paints and stuff, and they probably do it because you use two-pack paints with your model cars as well. Um, they spray the model, they spray the car, yeah, and they finish, they clean up, they take their mask off, they go outside, leave the room, whatever, and they think, right, after 10 minutes, let's go and have a see how it looks. And they walk in there, and because they finish spraying, there's no longer any paint in the air or anything, they think it's safe. No. All those isocyanates and everything are still in the air, and you need to make sure the room is completely fumigated before you go back in there, or or at least 90% fumigated. Um, you know, all of this stuff really isn't very nice. There's irritants, and then there's ones that are strictly poisonous. So that one there, I'm not going to chance. I don't want to be sitting in this room all night with that smell in the air. So, so basically, we've got to move on to something else. So I'm going to show you a discovery I've made um, about this deck. So... I've trimmed out the, the end to make it fit nicer in the back. I remember I showed you before that it was very um, tight. So on the bow here, I've got a piece of plastic strip on there, which is what everybody does. Add a piece of plastic strip to make it fit nicer. Now, what some people have done is left the, the deck off. Um, and then, well, at least Andy, Andy at, uh, Andy's, heavy, Andy's Hobby Headquarters has done that. Uh, and then spray that separate and then put it on afterwards. I actually want to glue it all together and mask it and do it that way so we get so I can get in and get some nice joints in there. Um, I also need to get some more Mr. Servicer in there. Now, I've discovered something here. This panel here is not too short. Okay? The deck is not too short according to the front end or the back end. It's too short in the middle because if you look here, you can see that these three moulded blocks here, they should line up with that recess in there. And we've got a panel that goes in there, which I've got here. And this one is for this side. Okay, so this panel has also got the three blocks. So that's going to go in there, like so. And you can see now that those three blocks don't line up with the panel lines in the panel I'm putting on the side. So it's not a fact of the deck is too short. The deck is correct here, but it's somewhere in the middle that it's actually too short or it's shrunk, in, shrunk when it's molded or whatever. But something else I've noticed, when you put the conning tower on here, we've got some play, fore and aft, okay? We've got some movement. And you can see by looking at this panel line here where my thumb is, you can see that we've got plenty of movement. Okay, so what I'm going to do is remove this piece of plastic from here and I'm going to cut the deck in half here. And the reason I'm cutting it here is because when the conning tower goes on, the only bit of the deck that's exposed is this little bit either side. So any seam work or anything we've got to do to repair the join is going to be there and not really very vis visible. If we do it anywhere else, we could be extending a panel. I mean, you could cut it here, cross through the middle of there, and then you've just got, you know, blend all that in. But it's easier to do it here and then just sand all the outsides. The middle can be can be left. In fact, we could use the advantage of being able to put a piece of plastic strip on there. And we could also put a piece of plastic strip on the back as long as it doesn't interfere with that bulkhead. And that bulkhead pretty much lines up with that slot. So we need to sort of make sure we do our cut around here and then we can put a piece of plastic on there to strengthen it afterwards. So I'm going to get this cut up now. 
and I'll remove this piece of plastic trim for the front and we'll see how it fits. Okay, so got my saw. Showed you this before. This is the JLC razor saw. Absolutely brilliant tool. And then what we're going to do is I've drawn a line on there and that's where I'm going to cut the uh, cut the deck. So I'm just going to go across the top like this. It doesn't matter if it's not perfectly square or parallel or whatever. Because all it is is just going to be, there's going to end, we're going to have a gap there. We're going to put a piece of plastic card in there and fill up that gap. Okay, now what you could do if you wanted to is put these, these two halves in. There we go, that's that done. I'm not even going to worry about deburring it. I'm going to worry about the corners because we don't want them to interfere with the fit. So just knock the plastic off those corners. Oh, and also it's going to have to be, we're going to have to make sure we've got a nice joint in there. And this is the thing with plastic modelling, guys. Don't be scared. A lot of people will be, oh my God, that's a hundred pound and you're cutting it up. You know, don't be scared. It's a piece of plastic. It can be remodeled, refigured, whatever. You can do whatever you want with it. So that's going to go in there like that now. Okay, so that's fitting in the bow. And as you can see now, the fit there is beautiful. Okay, so no issues there whatsoever. And then when we come along and fit this in, this is the first time I've done this. So if it doesn't work, you can shout at me. Okay, so now the deck is slightly too far forward, according to those lines. As you can see, let's get this bloody light out of the way. Okay, you can see now, according to those lines, the deck is too far forward, so we've got to move it just a touch back. I could just pull it from this end. It doesn't want to slide, there we go. So now they line up beautifully. We've got a tiny little gap at the front, which is probably not even 10 thou. Let's see if I can get a piece of, um, find a piece of 10 thou card in my scrap box. I've used it all up on Titanic. <laughs> um, let's see what there's some here in there. There's a piece. This is a piece off by Titanic Hull. And yeah, that's, that's a nice fit in there. So we'll put a piece of card in there just to uh, take up that gap. But there you go, they fit. Now that fits lovely and they line up. So we'll hold the deck in place and then we'll fit the rear deck. And now we can see we've got a gap there which we can put a piece of plastic card in. And I'm thinking, what's that? That's a bit too thick, so we probably want 0.75. We want to be careful if we don't wedge that deck forward. That's 0.5. And 0.5 feels about right. But I think what we should do is get a piece of 0.75 and cut it down because it kind of... That feels good. There you go. So if we glue that in there, now everything will be lovely. And I've managed to pull the deck back a bit more. So what I need to do is just calculate the right length. So this is in on this end and that's all taped in. And what we'll do is we'll tape it all in and then we'll fit these parts here and get those to fit lovely. In fact, I might even glue those bits to the deck and then they can slot in afterwards because there's going to be repair work to do there. Because they are separate panels by the look of things. We'll have a think about that. But the main thing is getting these lines here to line up so they look pretty. Okay, so, and as I said before, that's how it looked. That's how it looked before we cut it. So that's no good. It needs to be moved forward, but not all the way. Okay, so, piece of plastic card on the front of the deck, glued on, sanded in, deck fitted in. Those lines there lining up perfectly, so that's all good. Then we've got the aft section of the deck in there. We've now got a four deck and an aft deck. <laughs> um, two pieces of plastic card in there, wedging that apart. And lo and behold, look, conning tower fits on with a click. Hang on. There you go. That fits on there now, and it will even stay on there when I go sideways. So funny, isn't it, that that now fits beautifully, and yet before it was um, it was sloppy. It's almost as though it was meant to be that way. <laughs> Very strange. So um, 
yeah, there's my little fix to that problem. <clears throat> and as I say, we've only got now got this little area that we have to repair, which is an absolute doddle on a flat surface anyway. So uh, yeah, there we go. So that's the bow all correct, stern all correct, conning tower all correct. And that piece of plastic card fell out. So there we are. Just one other little tip guys, on the front here, when you've added this plastic card in, don't sand it off until you've fitted it to the hull. Reason being, if you look all the way around the deck, you've got these areas here. If you look at the edge of the deck here, you can see that rather than just being a straight plastic edge, it has like a, a rebate in it. And when you fit it down, it gives you the rebate, the panel line, if you like, all the way around here to mask to, but also it's the different it's the different panels that will remove from the um, from the fuselage or hull, whatever you want to call it. So Basically, that plastic strip has got the rebate. You can see there to the left of it, there's a rebate, yeah? So when you sand it and, and fill it, that will become, that plastic strip will become part of the hull. It's only fitted to the deck because it's easier to fit than fit it to the hull and try and sand it. So um, that's my advice and I'm sticking to it. So that's one thing I would uh, seriously recommend. Don't actually, don't sand it to the deck. Sand it to the hull. I'm just going to quickly remove some of the material from the top of it so it's not sticking up. And you can probably see better now that there's a, there's a rebate in there to the left of it, behind it. Okay, so there we go. And I've now got to find a piece of plastic card the right thickness, which I think is 0.5, and wedge it in there and glue it. I think it might be a 0.75 with a bit of a sanding. All right, we've uh, glued a piece of plastic card in there for a bit of support. We've got our piece of, um, this is a piece of 0.75 and I've just literally sanded the edge and taken it down to about 0.7. So it's a nice snug fit in there. So I'm going to just put my glue on here and then fit this in like so. And then we can put that away and then we can get some of our liquid cement and run that down in that gap. I'm conscious here I do not want to stick the deck down yet. I, I do not want to glue the deck to the hull. Um, but I do want to glue the deck parts together so I can sand them off the hull. So this piece of plastic strip is a nice snug fit. That'll go down in there like so. Just like that. Okay. And then everything is all nicely welded together with the plastic cement and I'm hoping it doesn't capillary along and glue itself to the hull but if it does then we'll just have to break it away so there we are and I'm going to put another rubber band on here being careful of those little pieces that stick out because they snap off really easily so slide that along there and this is basically just to hold the hole together to make sure the deck's all, you know, square and not like not doing this sort of thing. So we'll leave that to dry for a good couple of hours. In fact, probably overnight because I can't really do much else with it. And then we'll um, cut that all down and you'll never know it was there. So there's Nigel's little mod for today. Right, here we are a few hours later and the bow has been done with a coat of Mr. Surfacer. Polished back and then it's had a coat of Aqua Gloss from Owl Club, which is fantastic stuff. Just out of the bottle, just pour it in your airbrush, spray it, what you don't use, put back in. Uh, which some people say is sacrilege, but I don't see the problem. And um, yeah, it goes on really, really nicely. Good, good couple of heavy coats. You need to put it on wet for it to shine. And um, that's now going to be suitable for us to put our decal rivets down. So uh, yeah, I've got some pencil lines on there just as a rough guide. Um, and I've noticed, now, I'm looking at it now, it's not even straight, is it? So, waste of time that was. So once we've got our decals down, we can give it a cut of primer again and we can see what it looks like with the rivets on. This area down here, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, I'm probably going to have to do something fictitious. We shall see. Uh, maybe the rivet that was there before was fictitious. I don't know. But um, I've got pictures and images of this area from the model box. So, um, I have no uh, reference images. Um, somebody has kindly sent in part five... Somebody has sent a link to a German website where a guy has built a 30 second scale one of these 
worth going to have a look guys there's some good reference stuff in there and as jason said on his channel there are indeed railings around here which aren't included in the kit so yeah something worth looking at the actual deck is done you can see now we've got it all glued together still a little bit tight on this end but nothing like it was come out um you can see that piece of plastic car underneath there support it or then there's the bridge in there and i've got over with some mr surfacer you can see what Mr. Service on there, so now I'm just going to give it a, a polish, making sure when you're using sanding sticks like this, be careful that the back end of the sanding stick, because it'd be easy to go like this, and you, you end up sanding away this detail on here. Not that it matters, because that detail is only a um, location for the uh, life rafts. So those red, what I called boobs in the uh, review, they go on there. So uh, it didn't really matter, but be careful when using sanding sticks. You'll always be aware of what the whole stick's doing, not just the bit you're using. You can be sanding away something on an airplane wing, and little do you know, the back end of the stick is actually sanding away all the detail on your engine to sell or something. So uh, there we go. And then we're going to go into that rebate on the top edge there and just take that, clean that out, and then do the same on that side. And I think what I'll do is come in with a round section blade. And what you do is just push the blade along and it will follow it will follow the corner just like so and that will take anything out of the corner that's in there and then what you can do with the end of the blade is just gently go along get the corner in there and scrape do the same over here you put the radius of the blade in and it will follow There we go, and then corner of the blade in there. A gentle scrape along, and you'll feel if anything's there. There we go. And then when you look at that close up, I don't know if you can see the rebate, but it's there. You can see it better on that side. Okay, so there we are. So I'm going to give that a gentle sanding over once more. And then that will go back in. That's the back end. And that'll go back in there, put the back end in first. Front end in, there we go. Job done. And that all fits in there. Lovely. And then the conning tower will fit on just like so. It's such a good fit. Look, it, it's, it, it's almost as though it was supposed to be this way. Strange, isn't it? Right. So, um, I need to get some decals cut out and uh, go from there. And I've also mocked up the front of the hull as per the kit would be out of the box. And I'm going to show you the method I would use to correct it. If you haven't built this yet and you've got it in your stash and you haven't done the bow, this is how I would do it. Um, basically, this is what the front of the hull looks like. It comes along with this... This piece of plastic card here is this area here, okay? And then on the front, you've got this, instead of it just carrying on with its taper on the front coming in, it kind of comes along and then it squares out. And that is the squared up. So this is one half, all right? So this is what it looks like when you get it. So what I would do is measure the square bit, which I think on the model, let's get one of my blue rules, it's easier to measure with. I think you'll find it's about three and a half, maybe f yeah, like three and a half millimeters. Okay, so measure back for the square bit. Now, in this case, it's going to be thicker. It's this is six millimeters. So I'm going to measure back. This is just a piece. Of, ignore those holes. It's scrap plastic card. Measure back, and then mark a line. This is the inside of your hole now. Okay, mark a line. And then get a line in there like that. Bear in mind this is the inside of the hole. This is the outside with all the river detail. This is the inside. And then we get a scriber. If you haven't got a scriber, use a, a, a pin or something with a sharp point on the end. And what you want to do is just scribe the plastic but not so that you go through. Okay, you want to thin it out 
and do a couple of scribes right next to each other because what you're going to be doing is bending the plastic. So if you do a couple of scribes right next to each other and then you can change the angle like so, so you end up with a bit of a gouge. Okay, so when you look at that now we've got a, a gouge in there rather than just a simple thin and then what I'm going to do is fold it on that scribe and then using a straight edge on the outside we can get that square lump on the front parallel to the rest of the surface okay once you've done that a couple of drops of super glue in the back to hold it in shape and then I'll show you the next in a minute okay so I put some super glue in the back to hold it in shape so now remember this is the outside this is all the way river detail on and this is the inside so now the angle is on the inside going in rather than on the outside going out okay so you can see that now this is the outside this is the inside this is the face here where the plastic's going to go so what we're going to do now is mark the mark the plastic up on the inside and then using a, a nice hard stick nothing soft we're going to sand away this area on the inside okay you can take your time I'm butchering this but you can you can obviously take your time on your model and, and get it nice okay so sand away that lump just like so just take away the excess and then just going to sand it until I start to see that pen start to disappear and then I know we're all level. There we go, pen's starting to disappear. go so that's that done so now when we glue it glue it together you can see that rather than having this this great big lump of plastic sticking out on the front like a big square wedge it's now parallel so that angle continues forward like this one does now instead of it going along and coming out we had that square lump on there so that is basically how I would do it again. If I were to build another one of these, that is what I would do. Um, will I build another one of these? Probably not. Um, not because there's anything wrong with it. It's, I just don't want two of them. Um, but that is what I would do. I was, I was giving that some thought last night. And uh, yeah, so that's my advice to you guys. Now I've exaggerated this. The lump on the front doesn't have this big square edge on the back. It is just literally, it comes along. I'll grab my pen. The hull comes along this is on the original kit parts and then it goes like that on the end okay so that's your that's your part and then the other side is like that all right and all you're doing is actually cutting a groove in it here and then you're going to bend that in so that it becomes like that sorry it's thicker than that and then you're going to sand away this area here so you end up with the the pointy front okay so uh, that's that's my advice on how to do it and not lose all your river detail and everything the only bit is when you scribe it make sure you don't go through um other than that that's going to work out really really well for you so oh the first thing you have to do is cut that that towing eye whatever it is that you have to cut that lump off the front first uh, put it to one side and then after you've done it you can stick it back on there you go right there we go that's the uh, rivets on you can see them there hopefully you can see them there's little black dots and um, they're going to keep getting soaked in micro sole or micro set to make the carrier film completely disappear but because it's shiny you can see it under a matte coat of paint you won't see it but what I'll probably do is give them a couple of coats of gloss again to, to bed them in and then I'll just quickly rub up and down with a 
you know, get some like a, a skinny stick or a thin piece of emery and just rub down and just, just remove any little high spots that might be there left from the uh, carrier film because on the, the sheet that I've got, I didn't have the correct sort of pitch. We've got these here which are really close together, as you can see for the sort of, you know, diagonally opposed ones. And then we've got these over here. Where are they? Here. No, where were they? Here. They're too far apart. So um, <clears throat> what, I've, what I've done, I've, I've used, you can see where I've cut them from here, and I've cut them into single strips and then manipulated them into place myself. But we've actually got, you know, I don't rub them too hard, but we've got rivets there now. And uh, all looking good. So you can hear those rivets. And you can hear those rivets. So um, there we are. And they are, because I know you're going to ask, they are those. They're Micromark water slide surface details and they're available from them in the USA. Okay, so um, I don't know where else you can get them, have to look around eBay or whatever, but uh, I often get people asking me where can I get this from and they live in Brazil. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know. But, um, you know, so, so there we go, that's where they come from. Um, right, so the next thing I need to do is give this a coat of paint, but or a, coat, a gloss coat. But before we do that, let's have a chat about the questions and points raised from video number five. Right then guys, so looking at questions and stuff, I've got a little piece of paper here to the right of me where I've got all my stuff written down. So, um, first things first, as you know, I have been asking questions about these, these holes, see from the light, these holes in the conning tower. And as you can see there in the close up, they've got a D shaped hole with a round hole behind it. And it almost looks like something should go in there. Now, a few people have said that they are glazed. So it could be that they were going to put, make a clear part to go in there. Who knows? Um, but what I, my question is, is not what they're for, but what they're actually, well, it is what they're for. So I know what to do with them. What I want to know is that D shaped hole at the front, should that be all the way through or should there be like a hole at the back? Because it looks to me, I mean, when you look at that part, that looks to me like that was designed for something to go in there. You know what I mean? If if this was the like the um, the fire control sticking out the side of a turret on a, on a battleship, that's what it would look like. You'd have this riveted flange on there with a hole to put the part in, and uh, that's that's what I'm looking at. Now, a few people have a have answered the question. Um, thank you very much, saying that they think they're glazed outlooks uh, lookouts. Um, so yeah, that was uh, Viking123 and Phil um, and, and Jason have, have all said they think they're viewing ports, so they should be glazed. But we still don't know, or I still don't know, and I've looked on, on, on videos and stuff that have been referenced to She knows tonight. Um, and I, I've looked on, on videos and stuff, and I can't actually see that if it should be, if there should be a round hole in there, if the whole thing should be cut out into that D shape, and then that glazed. Um, I did have one guy comment, thank you very much, most valuable, said, it's a sub. The holes in the fin are for flooding, and then what you're talking about is the holes in the conning tower. Yes, thanks for that. Really really informative. That's just what I was asking. Um, okay, so moving on. Paul was asking about MRP primers. Uh, that's these here. Stand up and grab one. This is what I've been using here. This is the black one. Um, they do a black, a white, and a grey. Uh, they are really, really good. He was asking if they're airbrush ready. Yes, they are airbrush ready. He's concerned about primers causing spattering and clogging up your airbrush and stuff. They are absolutely brilliant. The two downsides to them is this. They're bloody light over the top. Their health and safety is atrocious. They're really, really bad for you. Um, so you need extraction, mask, you know. Um, and the other thing is they're very, very thin. So they do spray beautifully, but if you want something as a high build primer to, to improve a finish, they're really not what you want. You want something like a Steinle Res because that high build primer, or you know, the Tamiya stuff is very good, but you need to decant that into your airbrush really, if, unless you're gonna use it out of the aerosol can. But you need, a, you, you need a high build primer if, you, if you're looking for a better finish in your plastic to cover up sandy marks and stuff. Uh, this ain't your primer for that. This is great for priming like bare plastic and stuff. And for cars and motorbikes, that you have that, that kind of plastic interior parts and stuff and plastic trim, awesome. The finish you get with that is amazing. 
and it really does settle down nicely so if you've if you prepared your parts nicely really good stuff um Stephen asked uh rather than having looking at my hands when we do the q a bit can you look at my face hello uh matt was asking about art royal the Arc Royal kit from Merit, which is now I Love Kit, I don't know where they got it from. Um, it's a very good kit, apparently. Uh, I, I can't recommend it myself because I haven't built it. I haven't fondled the parts. I haven't seen it. It is something I want to get because it's such a beautiful ship and it's got such a history. I watched a documentary last night on YouTube all about it and um, really, really good when they took the guys back there. I can't believe why this light keeps going up and down. It's probably because I've got a crap camera on my phone. As soon as this, all this rubbish is over, I'm, I'm going out to buy a camera, guys. So things will be better. Um, and that is basically it. Oh, well, another question was asked about um, thinning Steinal Res. I don't know the answer. I looked up online and I read that somebody had tried um, this stuff. Mr. Cutter Leveling Thinners. Again, really, really hazardous, really bad for you. Um... And they, they suggested that I tried it and it worked. So I said to Ron over at, um, over at the model ship, I said, you know, use that. It's absolutely brilliant. It thins it lovely. Sprayed it beautifully. I did it on camera, I think. Next time I used it, it was awful. It turned it into cottage cheese. So I don't quite know what's going on. So if somebody can tell me what they thin their Badger Steiner res with or their UMP thinners, uh, UMP um, primers, what they use to thin it, I'd be really interested to know because I've got some here that it does tend to thicken up with age. It's a bit like Mr. Service, so that thickens up with age. But um, yeah, I'd like to know what to use to thicken, because I don't want to throw it away. It's just such a waste. Um, so there we go. That's pretty much it. Uh, I guess we'll do a little bit more and then we'll call that the end of part seven. So I'll see you back down at the bench in a minute. Right, here we are back on the bench and I've given this a coat of the clear again. And as you can see, I've put on a little bit too heavy and it's it's pulled. But so it'll probably pull down. But um, yeah, we'll give that a bit of a clean up afterwards, probably with a fibre brush or something. And we'll remove any um, any nasty bits. But uh, we can see now, if I catch it in the light, hopefully you can see the... Hopefully you can see the rivets in there. But, um, it's, uh, it's very nice indeed. So... Um, I'm happy with how that's come out. Like I say, as I showed you earlier, that is the better way of doing it. You know, as I showed you with that piece of scrap plastic, sand it on the, or scribe the inside, bend it round, sand it flat, job done. You won't have to bother worry about any of this then. So um, anyway, I don't know what you do, you'd still have to sand the bottom thing, I suppose. But uh, I suppose while it's apart, you could always scribe the back of that and fold that in as well. So um, yeah, now the bottom here, I haven't re-riveted this because We've got to rub down all this along here and everything yet, so I'll probably have to do some work along there. Back here, we've actually got it sort of beveled in. You can see it's not it's not radius of that. It sort of goes in and then back up again, so that's going to have to be sorted. But um, if I can be bothered, because it's going to be sat in a stand anyway, no one's ever going to pick it up and look at the bottom. There's nothing to look at. So um, I've also, while we've been off camera, I've glued the, I've glued the bulkhead in. Um, so it's out, glued this bulkhead in, so now it's all solid now, the hull. So we can put some glue in those points as well and get that all clamped in again. But um, yeah, we're looking lovely. Um, so I'm going to call that a day for part seven, guys, so I can get this video out to you. And then we will um, start looking at getting all this together. I think now we're, you know, we're at a point where we can start looking at getting the, the actual um, deck on. I need to get this exhausted intake sorted as well. Thank you again for all your emails and information about, about the, the, the boat. The thing is, you must remember, I'm always recording this a little bit ahead of time. So it's like today I had a, a, a message. Thank you from... Um, I'm sorry, I've forgotten your name. Oh, I'm very sorry. But um, was it Mike? I can't, about this, this deck. But, you know, I've already I, I recorded that yesterday. So yesterday was uh, Tuesday, today is Wednesday. So yeah, I mean, people are sending me through stuff about, about the, and, and I already know from the day before because I've already done it. So, um, but thank you anyway, a, a few things um, are coming through. I'm getting a few emails about these, this glazing in here now. So that's, uh, that's good. It would appear, it's ever so funny, as soon as I finished filming the last segment, 
my phone went bloop and I had an email from Dave and uh, he sort of thought that maybe those round holes were maybe there were going to be clear parts made that went in those round holes and the glazing would be flush with the surface. Funny how great minds think alike, eh? So anyway, um, apparently these holes here are misshapen as well. So I don't know what we're going to do about that. I don't know how we're going to fill them in. Um, I'm kind of thinking put some plastic rod in uh, to fill the round hole, paint them black, paint the area in there black, and then just puddle it with them um, with clear, with crystal clear, and it will just build up on the surface then with the black behind it. I think that's going to be the only way to do it. But the trouble is it may drive with like a concave face in it, so that won't look very good at all. Anyway, I'll see you all for part eight tomorrow, and uh, we'll go from there. Bye for now.